but I didn't go to the convention center. I was just doing uh, an event like nearby, but yeah. I, uh, I'm excited to see it. Yeah, we're well, rookies. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Did you guys start today or yesterday? Or We've been, been here since Wednesday. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so it's, uh, we got two more days. Sorry. No, no. no. All good. We sat down. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Should we all share this? Yeah, yeah this, you should be fine. Or should okay. I just leave it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, Hit it. My question is for you. Oh. Uh, hi, how are you? So, big fan of your work on The Daily Show Thank and you. In, in your comedy. Was it a big transition for you going from like doing comedy like that to an animated series? No, I have a theater degree. So, I'm a trained actor. So, this was just voice acting. Um, and so I think y'all can also agree, like, when you're just, rec even though it's voice acting, your body still does what it would do if you were acting with another person on camera. So it's, because to get the emotion that you need, or like, you know, if you ever seen where you're like running, like I'm I'll literally be in the booth being like doing my arms like this, just getting like the pacing out. I mean, I don't run because I'm a good person. <laughs> and but I that's just, true. You have to do a lot of noises. Yeah. Like, so they're just like, run, we need running sound. Right. Or, yeah. or you have to sound like you're like talking through eating or something like that. Or you're just like, or it's okay, we're in Alaska, so there's a lot of times we just have to be cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of times, like, okay, you're cold, okay, you're colder. And you're like, <laughs> so, like, I'm literally, because it's like, I'm in a sound booth in my house. It's so hot, I don't have a shirt on. Right, right, but right, right. it's just me, <laughs> just sort of to make sure that it's, you know, but the voice acting is, you know, I'm a trained actor, but um, it's, Acting when there's not a camera on you, so your voice is doing everything, that has been a different um, type of muscle to have to learn because you don't have the visual of yourself to, you know, portray what's happening. It's a cartoon, and you know, you have to make sure like the timing of what you're saying is right because they base the timing of the mouths that they draw off of how we say the words. So if we have to do a, a, a re-record or like a pickup, then we have to time it because once they animate the mouth, you have to make sure that what you say, the timing of what you say, lines up with the mouth that they drew. <laughs> so yeah, and a lot of times you you're recording just with the director. You're not with the other people in the scene, so you mm -hmm. have to sort of yeah hope that they you are saying it in a way where the other person can be like okay. <laughs> That works. But yeah, we hadn't uh, seen each other uh, until the, the hotel lobby. It was so nice. Yeah. I haven't seen Paul since 2019. I mean, me and Farner do stand up, yeah, so we've yeah, seen each other. Yeah. But I haven't seen Paul since yeah, 2019. Yeah, me neither. I know. In the flesh. Oh, wow. It's nice. So yeah. cool. <laughs> um, I'll give you a hard question. Uh, all right. This, this show. Um, no. <laughs> there, of late, there have been multiple approaches to presenting diversity on TV. This show does it, but doesn't bang a symbol about it. It just does it. Uh, what does it mean to you guys to be part of a show that, that succeeds, where other shows are not going to succeed because they're not doing it right? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, part of it, I think, is testament to Lizzie and Wendy and just, like, making their writer's room more inclusive yes. and kind of being able to bring those stories to life by listening to their writers and letting them have input that they actually take and are open to. And I think just, yeah, not making their show, like, diversity and bold, like, look at how diverse our characters are, but just, like, 
even the reverse thing of like, you know, I'm a 30 something Indian woman playing a 10 year old white boy. Like, you go the other way too. Um, I think it's been great because it's like when it came up to like the design for, they asked me for honey input on Honey Bee's character design. So like how her hair looked and how her body looked and like I said, give her an animal because her hair was just different before. And like give her an animal. and I was like, yeah, I was like, oh, squiggle, okay, fine. Like, oh, squiggle. And then I didn't know. So when we had our first table read on one person, I, it was the first time I saw the flower in her hair. Because my headshot, I have a flower in my hair. So it was like, oh, because I remember following my manager, I was like, they put a flower in her hair, and she looks like me. And so I called, and I sent a picture, she's like, send me a picture, and I, sent, I was like, mama, she looks like me. She's like, that's so good. And this is you. So I think that's the difference, where it's just like, it is easy to do a show that is inclusive if you have a diverse group of people working on the show. If it's just... If you don't have these people from these various backgrounds, then you have to bang a drum mm -hmm. because you don't know how to execute it. Like, the scene that was like Wolf and Honey Bee were in bed, and I hit up Wendy, I was like, if she's in bed, she needs her a head wrap on. And Wendy was like, we already got it. Because there's black people that on the show. So they had already, so someone already told her, she's gonna be in bed, she needs to hit, her hair's gonna be tied up. As opposed to me being, because I got, I saw it, I was like, Oh, damn it. I got two <laughs> <laughs> she was a rap on there, like, oh, we already got it. And so that was like the, for me, I just felt so much relief in that situation because I'm like, I didn't have to speak up. There was already someone who was there who did it for me. So then I didn't feel like the burden of how the show was going to look was on me. It was this person was already in the writer's room and gave them that information so I didn't even have to. So that for me, as a black performer, was it's just an amazing feeling because like it wasn't my job to make sure that she was represented as I, because I tell my hair every night. <laughs> and last question, but we need to make it a quick answer because we got to get over to the panel. Okay, okay. okay. and I have to be able to speak. <laughs> what are you excited about, your, about showing uh, your character in this third season? I'm excited about this rivalry. Oh, the I town rivalry? I love a rivalry. I don't know what high school you went to, but we hate everybody. <laughs> I love a rivalry. I think every town hates another town. So yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'll be very relatable. <laughs> but that's what I'm excited about, is for people to learn about not only Lone Moose, but like the other towns that are near them, mm -hmm. that kind of you know shape how they work in their own little small town. Yeah. So that's what the most, because you get more insight on the characters and their background. Okay, thank, thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. 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 Thank